out some great information. And with that, I'll call Dr. Bela Matches. Morning again, Board Bela Matias, Health Officer. Um, I wanted to give an update on where we stand uh, with respect to the novel coronavirus outbreak. Um, starting with uh, just an update on where we are with the disembarkation of the passengers on the, the Grand Princess, which as you know is docked to the Port of Oakland. Uh, yesterday, uh, they began screening and offloading individuals from that vessel. Um, a little over two dozen individuals, um, as, as they were screened, were found to be positive with symptoms that are consistent with this disease, so they were taken directly by ambulance to hospitals, uh, both in the Bay Area and further inland, uh, in order to be evaluated under isolation. In addition, uh, just under 145 uh, of those passengers were uh, brought over to Travis Air Force Base yesterday, uh, and they are, are being housed in the quarantine portion of the base that has previously housed several cohorts of other evacuees. Uh, in addition, there was a, a group of individuals that yesterday they were repatriated directly to Canada. Uh, today, um, the plan continues to screen every. The plan is to continue screening everyone, and then and then taking them to an appropriate destination. Those who are non-U.S. citizens are being flown uh, from a secure location at Oakland Airport back directly to their home countries. Uh, for non-California U.S. citizens, they are being flown to base to a base in Texas and a base in Georgia uh, in order to be held under quarantine. Uh, and for those who are California residents, uh, which number is a little over 950 on board that vessel, they are being brought to Travis Air Force Base uh, until capacity is reached and then overflow uh, of it, those individuals would involve one of the other bases in California, uh, most likely Miramar. Uh, apart from that evacuee effort, which is a federal mission very similar to what happened with the prior federal missions in terms of just evacuating people and holding them under quarantine, um, there is the ongoing outbreak in our Bay Area, and in including Solano County. We recently we received the ability to do local testing um, on Friday, validated the, the test over the weekend. We now, as of yesterday, possess the ability to do testing locally as well. Um, that will be a double-edged sword. It will certainly increase the speed with which we can get results, but it's invariably going to lead to substantially higher numbers of cases in our county. It's simply because we haven't been able to test that we don't have a, a more accurate picture of coronavirus in Solano County. And I think we need to be prepared that as we, as we begin to do more testing, more individuals will be identified with the disease. Um, the, other, the other thing that's happening is that we are working with partners throughout the county to assess gatherings on a case-by-case -case basis to, to uh, provide recommendations on whether those gatherings should go forward or be canceled. Um, are there any questions? Um, well, I think the in terms of um, can we talk about the first cohort and and where they where they are and okay so going so, home yeah. and so this actually represents the fourth cohort of evacuees okay. to Travis. As you may recall, the first two cohorts were plane loads of individuals that were State Department associated. From that combined group of individuals. Uh, we had five people who had to be removed from base for evaluation, and all of those proved to be negative. So the entire two plane loads of the, of the State Department evacuees that were housed at Travis were negative for coronavirus, uh, and they have, have all since been released from quarantine and returned to their homes. The third cohort, the third plane load, were, were evacuees from the Diamond Princess, which was a cruise ship that was being held in quarantine off Yokohama in Japan, and those individuals um, had a, a much, much higher rate of illness among them. We actually had to evaluate over 30 people from that cohort. More than two dozen of them were found to be positive for coronavirus, and they were in isolation. Some of them continue to be in isolation in hospitals in the area until they clear their virus, but that, the bulk of that group was released back home uh, last week. Um, there, were, there were six individuals who had to stay longer because they had had more recent exposures to their roommate, for example, who ended up having coronavirus. Um, but my understanding is that that entire cohort now has been repatriated to home. So the first three 
um, sets, cohorts of evacuees have ended their quarantine and, and returned home, except for those who had illness, and, and or not illness, but in most cases they were asymptomatic, but they were uh, producing the virus. And so they had to be held in, in isolation until they were able to be cleared. Most of them have been, but we continue to have about a half a dozen of them at area hospitals that have not yet cleared. Can you speak to um, the the number of folks who may ha who have tested positive for coronavirus and whether they have been asymptomatic or symptomatic, and what some of the general um, outcomes have been? So the individuals among the evacuees, with the exception of two who were symptomatic, all of the positives were asymptomatic, and so their health condition was never in jeopardy. Uh, they were simply sent to hospitals because they needed to be in isolation, and the isolation rooms in the hospitals were the only facility available for that purpose. So their health uh, was and continues to be fine. The two that were symptomatic have recovered, um, and, but they are positive for coronavirus, so they continue to have to be hospitalized as well until they can clear the virus. Fortunately, no um, difficulties emerged in terms of patient handling. All the patient cases were uh, essentially healthy or fully recovered. Um, by, you know, by contrast, within our own community, we had a community-acquired case that was identified. Uh, that individual continues to be uh, hospitalized. There were uh, several healthcare workers at North Bay who were, who were exposed and became ill with coronavirus as well. Um, for the most part, those healthcare workers that were exposed uh, were placed on quarantine and have been released from quarantine. So, so virtually all of the, uh, the quarantined individuals have been returned uh, to work. Uh, some of them, however, were isolated because they had symptoms. And among them, we continue to, to make sure that they recover fully before they can return. But the, the total number of healthcare workers impacted at North Bay was over 100. Um, but the, the vast majority are back at work. Uh, the exception are the three cases of illness who are continuing to be monitored. Two of them, unfortunately, have required hospitalization, although um, they, they appear to be in, in, uh, stable. But, but you know, the disease reminds that it can be quite significant. Um, we've also had multiple other cases since then identified among Solano residents, pre uh, predominantly f uh, people that were on the Grand Princess's first voyage down to Mexico, not the one to Hawaii, which is the one in the Port of Oakland now. Same vessel, same crew. Um, that group of individuals, those, those individuals are, are all three hospitalized and positive for coronavirus, and they remain hospitalized in isolation until they can clear their virus. Can you um, just define what you mean by saying cleared their virus? So at the, the initial indications were that, uh, that uh, well, the initial belief on the part of the CDC was that until people stop having virus in their respiratory symptom, system that they may be infectious to others. And so we are required to, to hold people in isolation until they are not producing any virus in their respiratory tract for two consecutive days. That's the, been the clearance standard. Uh, good news out of Germany yesterday is that that may be unnecessary because it appears quite clear in their data that people stop having infectious virus um, within a couple of days of ending their symptoms. It's, it's really more from the onset of symptoms for about 10 days that people are able to have virus emitted that can cause infection. And the, the question that you can ask is, well, why are we finding virus that's not infectious? It's because the test only looks for the evidence of the RNA in the virus, the nucleic acid material, and that doesn't by itself cause infectiousness. The entire virus has to be there, the intact virus, and that's not what we test for. But there is a way to test for viability, infectiousness, by culturing it. And so that was the critical testing that was done in Germany. We're hoping that'll be repeated by CDC as quickly as possible. Because that, that's, that's, at this point, a big game changer. That means that we can focus on people while they're sick mm -hmm. and not have to worry about it beyond that time period um, and not have to keep testing people every day for what can be months that they are shedding evidence of the virus, but that virus is not infectious. Um, I've read that 80% of the folks who have tested positive for coronavirus are asymptomatic. Is that what you're hearing? Is that's, that's the best so. guess. You know, when this disease was first discovered in Wuhan, uh, it was discovered because people were dying unexpectedly. So the, the, there was an over-representation in the initial group of people of people dying and people being hospitalized. And then it became rapidly overwhelming in Wuhan, and they never had the opportunity to test people with mild illness or no illness. So they, their impression was that everybody with this disease was, was severely ill and or dying. So those initial reports of death rates were based on a, a very selected, filtered group of people. 
Then subsequent outbreaks in other countries, again, that's how it's discovered. But then in, in, in some of the other countries, like South Korea, in Italy, um, in Spain and in Japan, they've actually been able to test people with milder illness, and they learned that a lot of the people who have coronavirus don't have severe illness, don't require hospitalization. And then we learned from the repatriated individuals from the Diamond Princess that a very large percentage of people have no symptoms but carry the virus. So it's, it's obvious that like with other respiratory diseases, at the top of the pyramid you have people who have serious illness, then you have a larger group, maybe 10 times as many with mild illness, and then, then again, a, a much larger group who are asymptomatic. But that pyramid is normal for all respiratory diseases that we know of, uh, so it's not unusual to have learned that. Mm -hmm. uh, the impact of that is, unfortunately, that most of the people who can convey the virus are not showing symptoms that would cause you to think that they have the disease. That's why it can spread so easily in our communities. Um, but the other good news of that is that most of the people infected are not going to have a bad outcome. Most of them are going to do well. Problem is that those who do most poorly are the ones that, are, that tend to be older and more medically fragile. So this is, uh, you know, this, the cohort of individuals that are already fragile are the ones who have the, the worst outcomes from this virus. And that, that's why it's really incumbent upon us to make sure we protect them most from exposure. And that's what I was going to ask you next was... Um uh, who, we should all be cautious, right? Wash our hands with soap uh, and water and, you know, avoid contact with people who are presenting themselves as being not well and um, avoid touching your face is a, another one of the, um, uh, the cautionary tales we've heard. Um, I, so those who are uh, more sensitive to the illness, uh, you know, we've heard about in the state of Washington in the uh, care of home, and can you talk about, you know, really, you know, where does it concentrate itself in terms of those who are going to have a poor outcome? So um, by far and away, the, the worst outcomes occur in individuals over the age of about 70, 75 who have underlying chronic health issues. Okay. And it's higher still among those who are institutionalized in that age group. So people in a long-term care facility um, are probably the most vulnerable. But then you know, we also need to worry about people in assisted living scenarios, in, in elder home, el elder living, congregate elder living scenarios. Um, uh, so th those are the folks that I think are at highest risk. But another group that we're very worried about are the homeless. The homeless are inherently much more medically fragile as well, independent of their age. So medical fragility, in, in other words, having underlying heart, lung uh, issues, problems with your kidneys, things like diabetes, do increase your risk of having a bad outcome, of getting sick, hospitalized, potentially dying. So those are the folks we, that the data show we have to put most of our energy on, uh, into protecting and that we are trying to do so with here. Now, I don't want to suggest that that means everybody else is okay. I mean, this is a, a, this is a, a disease uh, for which we have no immunity. It's going to make us sick. Um, and, and so we need to take, what, as you suggested, we need to take seriously the idea of not in, you know, of not spreading our respiratory droplets or engaging in people's respiratory droplets. And you know, if a person coughs or sneezes on you, there's not much you can do, obviously. So it's really important that people cough and sneeze into their sleeve or into a tissue and not spread the virus that way. But the other primary mode of spread is, is through our hands, you know, interacting with each other. And a person with illness brings their hand to their mouth, they shake your hand, you bring your hand to your mouth. So the most powerful tool you have to protect yourself is to not bring your hand to your mouth after interacting with other people to your face, really your mouth, nose, your eyes, not bring it to your face without first washing it or using a hand sanitizer after interacting with others. So there is, a, there is that opportunity that we have to protect ourselves from most spread. I'm not going to say all of it because coughs and sneezes occur, but most of the spread we can actually um, protect ourselves from. And if we do that um, faithfully, then it's not just coronavirus, but flu and all the other respiratory diseases that circulate during this time of year that we are protecting ourselves from. Thank you for that. Um, I know there is concern in the community. Uh, this is why we've asked Dr. Bela Matches to be here to, to uh, share this information with all of you here, um, make sure it gets um, into the papers as well. Uh, and we are um, gonna be looking at a more uh, public um, 
opportunity to be able to share how this is all working out here in uh, Solano County and specifically as it relates to the Grand Princess. I can tell you many folks who are on the Grand Princess are Solano County residents and we want to be uh, empathetic to them and their needs uh, while they uh, go through this 14 days if not longer quarantine period uh, and be supportive. So Doctor, thank you so much. I appreciate you thank sharing you very the much. information.